So in this video here, we're going to cover vision language models. We're going to cover what it is so you can understand what it is, how you can use it, and also their applications. But we also have some limitations with these vision language models. You've probably heard about the large language models, GPT, and so on from the natural language problem space. But now we can also use it with computer vision. So it pretty much works in the exact same way as the large language models. We take a sentence, we throw it into a transform architecture, and then we get the response back. There could be question answering, image captioning, and so on. So we can just throw in an image and we can get a description out. So instead of using words, from a sentence, we can go in and divide our image into individual smaller patches. Then we can take those patches, it will be the exact same thing as words, and then we can just throw that into a transform architecture and basically just train our vision language models on a large scale data set. So these vision language models can both be used for image captioning, visual question answering. So image captioning is basically just we take an image, throw it into the model, and we basically just get a description. So that could be a short description, but also a very detailed one. And then we also have visual question answering, where we can basically just ask questions of what is in the image, so what type is this car, what color is the car, and so on, like how many people are in the image. We have text to image generation as well. So you probably played around with those models as well, generative AI models where we just have a prompt and then you can go in and generate images, even videos, 3D models, and so on. Then basically just multimodalities, content creation. When we're talking about vision language models, they just work in the exact same way as the natural language processing large language models, but we just work with images instead. Some of the newer visual language models, they can also do scene understanding and update detection. So it can act like output both segmentation masks, but also bounding boxes. This is still in the early days, but it's definitely going in that direction. But one of the limitations as we're going to cover later in this video here is also the computational requirement that we need to run these vision language models. So it's not going to run in real time, not even anywhere near that. It will take a long time to just process one image. So we can use it for like real time update detection and tracking as we're doing with the Autolytics ULV8, ULV5 and all those models. So the idea behind these vision language models is basically just that we have the embeddings. So if we're working with natural language processing, the traditional large language models, we need to convert the text into embeddings. And that is the exact same thing that we're doing with our images. So we can take a whole image, divide it into smaller patches, and then we can create embeddings based on those. Then we can combine our embeddings from the images and also the text. So we have corresponding image and text pairs. Then we can just take a huge data set and train a large language models on that. And then we have these visual language models. Some of the news research, we can also go in and combine it with actions. So you can just take video images as input. It's going to understand what's going on in the images and then you can train it on doing action. So that could be for self-driving cars, human robots and so on. So it'll just be video in and controls and actions out. So we also have tons of blog posts on the Autolytics side. So definitely go in and check those out. This one specifically here, we also have one for just understanding how vision language models work in general and also examples of some of the good ones out there. Now, here we can see we have this multi-model fusing with cross attention. You can read about the key objects. You can see the overall architecture. So you can go and read more info about it. It's still very simple, easy to understand, where you can just go through it. You'll get an understanding of like how these models work. So there's tons of different applications that we can use these vision language models for. Could just be for scene understanding, optic detection and so on. It's definitely going in that direction, but also just to create product descriptions. Let's say that you have products, you have images of your products, then you can just have these vision language models generate product descriptions, but it can also be used for just making the internet more accessible. You've probably seen the chat GPT demos and so on where they're walking around and you can just ask what the camera is actually like seeing. So that's also a use case where we're using vision language models and you can combine it with other modalities as well. So we have this multi-modality where we both have audio, vision, language, and all of these modalities are just coming together now in the same models. So then we'll basically just have all the sensor input as input to the model and then we'll have the results out. But this needs to be trained on a very large internet scale data set. So these are some of the applications of vision language models. Again, you can use it for tons of other different things, but these are the most important ones right now. Could also just be for general classifications. It's really good at doing that. Image description, you can just ask it what's in this image here. Could be used for securities, but the limitations is that it's very expensive to run. It won't be able to run in real time, but there's tons of applications where you might just want to sample an image here and there and ask it questions. 
Could also be that you're not doing it in real time. Could be in a production line where you're basically just looking for anomalies, mistakes and so on in the process and you can just sample images here and there and then go in and prompt it and ask it if there's any anomalies in these images. Another benefit of these vision language models could be in the medical field or pretty much just in some field where we don't have that much data because these models they're trained on a large scale data set which means that it has very good zero shot or even like few shot learning capabilities. So you can just have a couple examples, show the model, how to do it, do detections or basically just answer your questions or even just zero shot as well, where it hasn't seen any of the use cases, any of the specific tasks that you're trying to solve before, but it will still be able to generalize and help you out in that case. So that's pretty much it for this video here. This is how the vision language models work in general and on a very high level. It's good to understand how it works under the hood and so on, because when we're interacting with it, it's way easier if you actually like understand how is it trained, how does it actually like generate and combine all the modalities with text, vision, audio and so on because everything is starting to come together. We also need to know the limitations, the advantages and the potential use cases that we can use these vision language models for. So definitely go ahead and check out the blog post and also all the other videos here that we have on the channel. These very large transformer models, they can both be used for auto annotation, image generation and so on. And then we will fine tune smaller models that we can run in real time put into production so we lower the resources that we need, but also the computational cost. I hope you learned a ton this video here. Definitely go ahead and check out the other videos, and then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.